been uh, my story. Let's see, I started in '97, so do math. It's 22 years. Am I that old? Uh, 22 years in the business. Um, started when I was 26. Um, so the only people that would give me the time of day were first-time buyers. Um, I actually had somebody ask me if I was old enough to own real estate. Um, so, um, oh, and um, one thing this morning, um, 20 minutes seems like an eternity in my world up here this morning. So um, if y'all have questions, please ask. I'd love for this to be interactive. Um, uh, so don't be afraid to, to ask questions. But so, um, so going back to uh, in the beginning, I, I started, um, you know, and, and did a lot of um, door knocking, cold calling. All, who, who likes to do that stuff? Anybody? Come on. There's one. And where's Gusty? I know he loves hammering the bones and making cold calls. Yeah. That is that is not my thing. Um, so I learned I learned early on, and that that's one of the things that you can do in, in a in a a format like this, or in aligning yourself with people that you want to work with uh, on a professional level and be around. Is you know you're going to hear a lot of things. Um, but they won't all work for you. So you, you have to kind of take from anybody that you're around and anybody that you're listening to what things work for me and my personality. Um, Gusty is, you know, Mr. Hammer the Phones and, and Cold Call or follow those uh, Zillow leads and things like that. That was never my personality. And I learned um, a lot in the beginning from some of the people that I was around what worked for me and what didn't work for me. And I learned quickly that knocking on doors and cold calling was, wasn't my thing. And so <clears throat> now the things that I'm going to talk about this morning are things that take some time to develop. Um, they, they don't come overnight. Um, so um, one of the things that I did early on, um, well, backing up a little bit. So my business went, starting in 97, every year... When I first started, my goal was if I could do, if I could sell one, this is going to date me, $100,000 house uh, per month, then, you know, we could make it. It would kind of suck, but we could make it. Um, my wife, Jennifer, who's here, she's my supplemental brain. If you see somebody throwing signs out from the front of here, that's, <laughs> that's her reminding me of things. But um, so, um, you know, that was the goal in the beginning, if I could just do that and just get by, you know, to, to see how this thing was going to work. Um, and, um, it, you know, it kind of grew from there. So starting in 97, 97 through 2005, every year was better than the one before. You know, incremental growth, we're getting there. I went from, you know, my first year, I probably, I can't even remember, I probably sold first full year somewhere between 15 and 20 houses. Um, in 2005, I think I, I, I maxed out at, I think it was 42 or something like that. Um, and then the market decided to kind of, you know, do some goofy stuff. And then it started falling off and we were going the wrong direction. Um, my income took about a $100,000 hit from, from peak to trough, which was not fun either. Um, so, um, so it kind of was some in incremental growth in there. In there, we kind of learned some things toward the end of that. That, that 2005 year, um, we lived in Helena. <clears throat> and so I, I, I looked up one day, and, and I had so, been selling a fair number of homes in, in, in one neighborhood, the neighborhood I, I lived in. And Jennifer actually had the great idea, why don't we do this postcard? that kind of touts the, the homes that you've sold. And so that, that's sort of where um, my story kind of starts with how my business has grown, is we did this postcard with pictures of probably 12 or 15 houses on it with sold, marked across all of those, and then simply said in the middle with a picture of me, who do all of these old Cahaba homes have in common? Um, you know, eventually it got to, to be, you know, who do all these homes plus 50 more or whatever the number was have in common. Um, and so that, that 2005 year where I sold 42 homes, 17 of them were in that one neighborhood. Um, so part of what um, my topic is about is just getting the phone to ring so that you're not having to hammer the phones and, and having sort of business coming to you. Um, I, I have built my business on attracting business and not chasing it down. And 
Um, it, it's a nice place to be. I mean, I can't tell you um, how often the phone rings and it's just somebody going, hey, um, I, I'd love to talk to you about listing my house. Well, I mean, I, I didn't, that, that's not an internet lead that came, that came in that I had to call them, you know, five or six times to even get them to answer the phone for me to even have an opportunity to try to set the appointment. They're just calling me and saying, hey, what day can you come to my house? Um, and so, so that sort of started with that. Um, we moved to a different area of town, moved over to Chelsea um, shortly after that 2005 year. And we started to implement some of the same things um, there. Uh, of course, the, the market crashing kind of caused those efforts to take a little longer to get started. Um, and, and, and some of the things I'm going to talk about, well, they do, they take a little bit of time to get started. It's not overnight. But like Clarence was saying, you got to be looking down the road. You, you know, there are things that you have to do now to put food on the table, but you also need to be planning and thinking ahead of what things can I be implementing as a long-term thing that's going to really build my business and set me up to, uh, to have success down the road and, and to really grow things. Um, so, um, so we started doing that. We, we, add, we, we started um, doing some postcards in our, our particular neighborhood. Um, it was all, uh, you know, it was, it was a fairly new neighborhood, so not many people were moving yet. But I knew that over time that, that would work. Um, we eventually expanded that, and I, and I really, um, in 2012, I kind of noticed uh, by accident, really, that I had sold more homes in Chelsea, Alabama than anybody else had that year. So I thought, okay, if I don't tell people that, nobody else is going to. So um, the only way to stay there is to let it be known. So, um, so that was the, we decided to do a billboard. We found a, a, a billboard that is the best deal I think I've ever found at $200 a month. Um, and so we put that up and that, that's kind of, uh, and, and it's an off the beaten path, you know, it's not on a major highway or anything like that, but the people who need to see it, see it. And that's the things you need to think about is what is your market? Um, what is your niche? Um, is it a neighborhood? Is it a, a town? Um, is it a type of home? And those are things you can think about is what do I want to carve out as my niche that I just systematically try to over time take it over and 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 dominate that market and that's um, that's what we've kind of done and, and started from a neighborhood level and grew out from there um, and so the um, so that was uh, 2012 I did that um, and it's grown from there I mean I, I have uh, since 2012, I've been the top selling agent in the Chelsea market every year. Um, so far this year, I think I have sold somewhere, I, I've, I've done, a, I will do 80 transaction sites this year. Um, around 50 of those are in Chelsea. Um, the last time I looked, the number two agent in Chelsea had sold 17. So there's a pretty big margin, a uh, pretty big gap in there. Um, and so part of it is, you know, the, the, the people ask me sometimes, what is the thing that you think, uh, is there any one thing that, that, that you think is uh, something that's really helped you and really been the big thing in your business? And, and I can't really point to one thing, and there's so many that work together, but consistency over time, um, I think are major, you have to be consistent with things and you have to stick with it because you can't just do something one time and it pay off. Um, or, or it might pay off once and, you know, um, you know, it's just sort of a, a one hit wonder thing, but you gotta keep doing it. If you find something that works, stick with it um, or, or give something time to start working before you scrap it. Um, you know, I mentioned postcards. Some people laugh at me about sending out postcards. People think direct mail, you know, things coming in the mailbox are, are dead. Um, you know, internet marketing's great, and I, and I do a lot of that too. Um, but depending on, I mean, it, 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 the, the direct mail marketing works if you're consistent with it. You can't send out one postcard a year and it work. Um, you can't send out one postcard and expect your phone to start blowing up. It doesn't work like that. I've been doing it for years, and there's sometimes one goes out and I don't get anything, but then, you know, 
I, I have walked into a house before, back before I was as consistent with the mailings as I am now. I've walked into a list of house, um, and I walk into that house, and I notice stuck on the refrigerator is my postcard that I sent out like six months ago. Those people got that postcard, and they held on to it for that long because they knew they were going to be moving in a few months, and they thought, hey, this is the guy we want to call for whatever reason. You know, it could be... They had heard of me. They liked the message on the postcard. Um, I've gotten more times than not, well, your picture, you just look like a nice guy. <laughs> okay, whatever works. <laughs> so, um, now the trick to that one is you got to back that one up. <laughs> you can't go in and be a jerk. Um, so, uh, the consistency over time is, is, a, big, is a big thing. Um, I talked a little bit about um, you know, picking whatever your niche is, your market, your, your neighborhood, your town, you know, you want to be the condo king or you want to be, which wouldn't be a good idea in Birmingham, those don't sell real well, um, but, um, you know, whatever it is that you pick out to be your, your, um, your market, you, you need to be highly visible. Um, you, you sort of want to become almost like a local celebrity, which has been weird for me because I'm not... I'm not that guy. I'm kind of low key. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I like people. I like to hang out with people, but I'm never the guy that's just the center of attention in the, at the party or whatever. You know, I'm I'm hanging out with everybody, and I'm not like you know scared to be there or anything. But I'm I'm trying not to call attention to myself. But you know, I stopped at Piggly Wiggly in Mount Laurel um, Saturday, and I'm going through the checkout line, and the girl goes, "Is your last name Beasley?" <laughs> She's like, do you have a do you have a billboard over? I was like, yeah, that's me. You know, so you, you know, as weird as it sounds, sort of becoming that local celebrity, which is a weird word to say, but just being highly visible in your community, where people know who you are, they know what you do, and they know that you do it well and at a high level. Um, and that's the thing that you that that is that is very important, and it, and that will make the phone ring because I. Look, I've got two billboards in Chelsea. They wouldn't work nearly as well if they didn't say that I was the top producing agent in that market. <clears throat> if it was nothing but an oversized uh, business card, I don't know that I would get the calls that I get off of those billboards. But because I can say that I'm the top selling agent in the market, um, it gets the phone to ring. So you, you have to figure out what is, um, you know, there, there, there's a thing in marketing called a USP. That's the unique selling proposition. So you have to figure out what is my unique selling proposition? What is it that makes me the person um, that someone should choose to do business with over all the other, you know, Gusty mentioned 4,000 realtors, you know, in the Birmingham market. Uh, why should someone choose me over those people? What's that reason? And, and look, it can be um, you've made a connection with them on a personal level. Um, that they just like you. Likeability is huge. You know, if people like you, they're going to do business with you. Um, you know, it, it, technical knowledge. Your, you know, for me, a lot of times it's my track record and my visibility in the community. Um, so you have to figure out what what is it about me. I mean, some companies, it's their unique selling proposition is they do it cheaper than anybody else, and I wouldn't recommend that. But I mean, it's just things like that. What are the things that make you stand out above the competition and make people want to do business with you? Um, over over somebody else, uh, so you have to figure out what that is for yourself. Um, you know, being highly visible. Uh, you know, the postcards, the billboards. I, I've sponsored countless little league teams. Um, if you've got kids, my my kids, uh, they're, they're not. You know, you're not going to tell them this, right? Okay. So I made a lot of money off my kids. <laughs> they don't need to know this because they'll just want money. Um, but I mean, just because when you have children, and and as they get school age and you know growing up, you're involved in so many activities, you know, little league and dance and you know whatever um, that you come in contact with other people and you 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 kind of bond with them and get to know them through the kids because you're hanging out with them so often because all your kids are doing things together. Um, I can't tell you how many homes I sold out of the ballpark when my son was playing baseball. Um, 
years ago, I used to drive my, my Jeep around with the magnets on the door, you know, that had my name and phone number and everything, and had one of the one of the parents come up to me one day and say, hey, we didn't know you were a realtor. We just saw you driving up in your Jeep. We're about to sell our house and move to Georgia. We, why don't you come talk to us about that? So, it, you know, what, something as simple as wearing a name tag, just so that it prints in people's names over and over again, that they know what you do. Um, you know, don't be, I've a, a, a heard years ago, don't be a secret agent, you know, so um, you, you gotta not be afraid to let people know what you do. Um, and whether it's magnets on your car, wearing a name tag, um, you know, getting in front of people on social media, whatever it is, just to remind them what you do for a living and staying visible. Um, when you do get in front of people, um, when, when you get those opportunities and you, you get to sit down at the kitchen table with them, um, you got to be genuine. You got to genuinely be helpful um, for them. For me, it's always been putting the needs of, of my clients and customers above my own. Um, I learned a long time ago that if, if I take care of people and take care of what their needs are, and don't worry about me, God's going to take care of Chad. You know, if I'm doing the right thing by his people, he's going to take care of me. Um, and so that's, um, you know, uh, a, a, a huge thing for me is just doing the right thing. I, I, I try to focus my business and focus, or really just focus my mind on Look, I, I, there are so many people out there that we come into contact with that need help. They genuinely need help. They're doing, you know, uh, there, there's a, a, some sort of life change, some whatever's going on. Or sometimes they're doing something and it's a, a you know, there, there's no, no drama, no strife in their life. But they, they, need, they need that calming um, presence in the middle of that transaction just to, to help them get through what they're going through. And, so, you know, I often just look at my business as, as, a, as a ministry and I ask God to, hey, put me in the path of people who I can make a difference for you. And so in doing that and, 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 and focusing my business that way, um, it, man, it really helps you not get burned out, you know, when you, when you feel like you're doing it for a different reason than just to get a pay, paycheck, um, that you're really doing it to help people and to, um, yeah, and, and to um, you know, affect someone um, in a positive way, uh, in, in a way that God wants you to be there, um, and then and then He'll take care of the rest. Um, but I can't tell you how many times you do. You have to be helpful in this business, and you have to understand that sometimes people are going to call you, and they're going to ask for free advice, or they're going to ask for this or that. I mean, and and I've always been that guy that you're right or wrong, I, I give it away. Um, but it'll come back to you. I can't tell you how many times people will call me asking me questions about this or that, or you know, call me at nine o'clock on a Sunday night, you know, because they need a painter or something. Like that couldn't wait until Monday morning or you know whatever. <laughs> but but that's okay. I mean, I, I, they know that that I've got connections and contacts for that sort of thing, and you know, if I help them with the things that they're looking for. It'll generate. It, it, you know, eventually it's going to come back to me. Whether it's them coming back to me when they're ready to sell, or through referrals, you know, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, heck, I've had people call me, you know, asking me for advice on things where they were going to try to sell their house for sale by owner before, and I usually tell them what I think and you know what what my advice would be. And you know, sometimes they come back around and go, you know what, this ain't going to work, you know. Come put your sign in my yard. <laughs> so, um, so being helpful to people and putting their needs above your own is, is key because people can see through a salesman. I've never looked at my role as that of a salesman. I, I'm more of a consultant. I'm here to kind of figure out what does my client need and how can I help them get there. Um, and I'm not really here to sell anything other than myself, I suppose, that, that I'm, I'm the guy that they need to, to do business with. Um, so, you know, a lot of the things we've talked about this morning is marketing, and I found this <coughs> definition of marketing that I thought was pretty cool. Um, marketing is the process of teaching consumers why they should choose your product or service over those of your competitors. 
And that's what it boils down to. We're trying to stand out from the crowd. There are four, four to 5,000 realtors in the Birmingham market. Why in the world should somebody choose Chad Beasley, the skinny kid from Cottondale, Alabama? You know, it, it comes down to the things we've talked about already, just genuinely being helpful, being good at what you do. Dive in, if you're a newer agent, dive in and learn as much as you can about the process, about how this works. Um, devour what you can about, you know, what the different mortgage products are and how, and just so that you know what you're doing when you get in front of people, but don't have paralysis of analysis to where you are afraid you've got to know it all before you do, any, do anything, because I guarantee you, you know more than the person you're sitting across the table from pretty much 100% of the time. Um, and then align yourself with people who can help you. Um, my door is always open. If any of you guys ever have a question, you know, anything that I can help you with, you just want to bounce an idea off of, give me a shout. I'm happy to help. Um, uh, but we but we talked about um, you know being consistent and um, and then you got to be patient um, with the with the process of what you're doing. If you're if you're setting it up to try to to, to set your business up so that you're attracting people to you, you, you just have to be patient and you have to be consistent because that doesn't happen overnight. Um, I remember being about five years into uh, my real estate career and looking up and going, okay, may, maybe this is going to work, <laughs> you know? And, and, and then up until that point, and, and a lot of times after that point, there's been a lot of times where, you know, this, this business is really up and down, and you're, you know, you're having a great month, and then the next month, um, it's not so great. Um, and so you have to be, you have to be patient, and you have to be consistent. It's taken a long time to get here. You know, it didn't happen in one year or two years, or, so you have to realize that it's, you're not starting a job if you're a newer agent or if you're just trying to grow things. You're starting a business or you're growing a business, and it doesn't take it doesn't happen overnight. Well, thank y'all.